In today's video, I'm going to help you finally make sense of music theory in a very practical way so that you can fully express yourself on the instrument. Hello, my name is David and I help guitar players express themselves on the instrument. Music is a language and just like any language, there are rules. Now, does that mean that you need to know the rules to express yourselves? No, kids do it all the time. However, the more rules you know, the better options you will have to truly express yourself. And that is what we're going to look at today. We're gonna to look at theory. I'm gonna get on my desk. We're gonna we're gonna draw a few things. It's really going to change the way you approach theory, but I need your attention. And also, if you wanna get a little bit further with this, I highly suggest you sign up to my free music theory DNA course at guitarinfusion.com. I'll tell you more about it after this video. But for now, if you are ready, let's change everything. First things first, yes, the sound of my voice has changed a little bit and it's because I'm using this right here. This is the Tonor TM20. They're sponsoring this video. And this is a video conference mic. It's very affordable. It's plug and play. I didn't have to install any drivers just sits on a desk and it captures the sound of the whole room. Especially nowadays where there's a lot of Zoom meetings going on, it's so convenient, fits in your backpack. And one of the cool things is that you just press this button and then when you press it, you didn't hear anything because that was muted. So that's how you can mute or unmute your microphone. I'm gonna leave the link below. Thank you Tonor for sponsoring this video. Let's get into this. This right here is at the core of everything you will encounter in music theory. And really, what's on the top is the most important. You probably saw this diagram before, I refer to it every once in a while. This is ingrained in my mind and it should be ingrained in your mind too. How does this work? Well, this right here is a visual representation of all the possible notes you have on your guitar. It's split into eight columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you've never done music theory before, you've probably heard about these numbers before. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so forth. That's what that is. And here's the deal. You see that within each of the columns, we sometimes have multiple choices. So there are multiple thirds, multiple fourths, multiple fifths. All right. Here's the one rule you need to know. It's going to simplify everything. In music theory, when you are building a musical element, whether it's a chord, a scale, a riff, a lick, whatever it is, that thing, I'm going to make a generalization here, that thing that you're building can have up to seven notes. That's it. Now, of course, that rule can be broken. Don't break it yet. It's going to simplify everything. So just one of each of the seven columns here. Now, what about the eighth column? Or here's the thing. The first and the eighth, they're the same exact notes. One is low, one is high. So let's say that this is an A. A. And then you go through the columns. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. A, 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 A. Same note. Not exactly the same pitch. One is higher. A, A. One is lower. But in between, we have all these columns, and really the function of this first column and the last column is exactly the same. But we have eight because it's nice and symmetrical, and then the diagram continues over and over and over on the fretboard, getting higher and higher on the, the pitch, with the pitches of the notes. Okay, so we learned a lot already. We learned that in any musical element you build, you're going to have up to seven notes. These notes are found in the seven first columns. Now you know why, what that eighth column is, right? All right, what about this deal? We, we have multiple placements in some of the columns. The one, we only have one possible placement. That's great. But then the two, well, which one are you going to pick? Which three? Which four? It's up to you. And depending on which one you pick, the musical thing you're building is going to have a particular emotion tied to it. Let's say you build a scale, for example, a scale made of seven notes. Well, a scale that follows, I'm going to grab a pen here, or a, we'll use some colors here. Let's say that we have a scale that takes this path, starts on the one, and then this two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. That path is going to sound different from a path that will that would use other possible seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths. And that explains why we have multiple scales. Okay, let's just talk about uh, a vocabulary really quick. If you draw a line here in the middle, that line will cross the, the one, also known as the root, the four, the five, the eight, but the eight or the one are the same. Anything in the middle is called perfect. Just That's just the name, perfect. They're not better than any others. They're just called perfect. So the perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Now, if someone asks you to play the perfect second, well, no, that doesn't exist. That's a test to know if they know what they're talking about. No, it doesn't exist. There's no perfect here. All right, the line above here is for major. So anything that crosses this line is going to be major. So we have a major second, major third, major sixth, and major seventh. The line below the perfect is for minor intervals. Intervals, columns, same thing. So we have minor second, minor third, minor sixth, minor seventh. And then above the major, we have augmented. That's the fourth and the fifth. And diminished, the fourth and the fifth also. You have everything you need now. Okay, let's go through these. Here, we have some commonly used scales, musical alphabets, same thing. I'm going to, to map these out on the diagrams. So it's going to follow a different path, and it will show you the difference between all of them, and then we're, I'm going to show you something really cool. All right. Ionian is the name of a scale an Ionian scale, Ionian mode, also known as the major scale. It's the same exact thing. I'm going to map this out right here. Ionian is made of a one. So we'll do one here. Then we have a major second, a major third, a perfect fourth. If my kids are, are watching me, I know I'm not coloring in the lines. That's okay. Major sixth, major seventh. Okay, that's the path that you would take for an Ionian scale. The Lydian is very similar. It also has a one, major second, major third, augmented fourth, ah, that's different. Perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh. Okay, that's the path that you would take for this uh, scale that is called Lydian. Mixolydian. it's gonna be a different path, of course, because if not, then it wouldn't be called Mixolydian, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. So far, this path here looks exactly like the Ionian, right? But there is going to be a difference here. In the seventh, it's going to be a minor seventh. Okay, so that's the path of the Mixolydian. These three paths here are different from each other, and that's why they have different names. Okay, let's move on to this one right here, this column. I'll explain to you after why these columns. Uh, Dorian is made of a one, a major second, a minor third, a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, minor seventh. Phrygian, a one, a minor second, a minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, and minor seventh. Aeolian, we'll have a one, Major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, and a minor seventh. And then finally, this last one here, the Locrian, has a, a one, a minor second, a minor third, perfect fourth, a diminished fifth, a minor sixth, and a minor seventh. Kind of taking the the low path here, going down, down, and then middle, down, down, down. Locrian sounds very tensed. The reason it sounds so tensed is because of that path here. It's going towards like the bottom um, almost all the time, except for the fourth, which is perfect here. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. The first thing I want to show you is uh, these two columns here. Check this out. Right here, we have uh, what I call the major modes right here. They are major because of the third. Whenever you have a musical thing that has a major third, so that's the, the top three here, it's going to be a major thing. 
major scale, major mode, major lake, major chord. It all has to do with the third. All the other columns could be minor. As long as the third is major, it's a major thing. It's going to be put in the major box. And in the same way, anything that has a minor third, so these have minor thirds, they're part of the minor collection of things, musical things. In this case, modes, scales, you could put minor chords, minor licks, minor songs. It has to do with the third. All right, check this out. Change colors. And we're going to go through these modes. These are commonly used modes. Most of them are very commonly used, except for uh, this one right here, the low Korean mode. We'll get to that in a second. The first thing I want to do is, uh, let's, let's start with the minor modes here. We're going to highlight the similar notes that we have between these modes. So Dorian has, they all have a, a, a one, right? The root. Of course they do. Low Korean, we're going to skip that. We'll see why in a second, okay? We'll skip that. Dorian, major second, Phrygian, minor second. Okay, so these are not common. We're looking for the common notes between these three scales here, Dorian, Phrygian, Aeolian. Minor third, for all of them, yes, because they're under the minor box. So, yep, we can highlight that minor third here. The fourth is perfect in all of these three modes. The fifth is also perfect amongst these three. The sixth, major sixth, minor sixth, no, that's not a common note. The seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh, yes. Great, so we can highlight these. So we have five notes in common here, right? Okay, these five notes are common to Dorian, Phrygian, Aeolian. If we look at Locrian and we try to try to see if they're common, well, the root is common, the one is common, minor third. Uh, the the fourth perfect is common, but the diminished fifth that's not common, and so that doesn't fit our you know five similar notes here. Plus, the Locrian is never used. They're rarely used. It's so tensed. So I'm going to take that out. It's going to be very rare that you're going to have to play something in low Korean unless you specifically want to. So great. So the same thing on the I the, the major side. The common notes here are going to be the, the one, the major second, the major third. We already knew that because part of the major thing and the third determines the nature or the box that it's going to fit. Uh, the fourth, no, not common because we have a perfect fourth in Ionian and Mixolydian, but we have an augmented fourth here in Lydian. The fifth, yep, we have perfect fifths. And the sixth is going to be major amongst the three. The seventh is not common. So again, we have five notes here. All right. These five notes, most likely you know what they are. I'm going to keep a red here. These five notes, if you play them, minor pentatonic. That's a minor pentatonic skill. That's awesome. So we're going to call this, we're going to put a note here, minor penta. The five notes common to these uh, three major modes, that's also a pentatonic, and that's a major pentatonic. What am I going with? Where am I going with this? Well, if you were to play something in, uh, say, Phrygian, oh, let's jam over this cool Phrygian riff, you can play mine in pentatonic. Let's jam in this uh, cool Santana-esque Dorian chord progression, minor pentatonic. Aeolian, minor pentatonic. That explains why most players use the minor pentatonic scale, because it's hidden within these modes. And that's great, but that creates a lot of frustration too, because all your licks sound the same. They, the, the reason it, it might sound Dorian or Phrygian or Aeolian is because of the chords, but not because of what you're doing. So you're missing some notes to really bring out the color of these modes. Same thing goes with uh, the major modes here. This is just the beginning, but this is a very good visual representation. It really clarifies everything in your mind. This will allow you to match chords with scales, harmonize things, rearrange things. Everything is found within this. So I highly suggest that you, you memorize this and you can 
get this and more with a free music theory DNA training. But anyways, that's what I have for you. This is the most important thing you can do to understand music theory. I highly recommend you commit this to memory. And if you have any questions on this, well, let me know in the comments below. If you watched this video till the end, congratulations. This, I hope, was the beginning of a healthy view of music theory. There are many more things you can do with this, but it's very simple. It just starts with that simple DNA diagram. I hope it's ingrained in your mind. Click right here to join my free music theory DNA course. It has helped thousands of guitar players and I want to help you too. It's free. The link is below or you can click right here. I'll meet you in the course.